and welcome back to another She's the Boss interview. Today I'm joined by Letitia, who is the creative director of Relevant Waffle. <laughs> Letitia, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to hearing a bit more about your journey. And please tell us about Relevant Waffle. Where did the name come from? What was the inspiration behind the business and what is the business? Okay, um, so yeah, Relevant Waffle um, started off as a blog and I started this when I was in Rotterdam and basically I was working in an architecture practice and I just felt like I needed com um, something in the, on the weekend or in the evenings that I could just, you know, kind of tap into my creative skills, uh, whether that was through writing or creating posts for recipes and stuff like that. So the, word, the term relevant waffle was kind of an oxymoron because obviously it's relevant and waffle at the same time um, because I wanted it to be, I didn't want to be a beauty blogger, I didn't want to be a lifestyle blogger, I just wanted to be, you know, write about anything that I cared about and just put it out there. Um, so that was anything from like where I went to eat on the weekend to DIY recipes. It was really kind of wide. Um, so I knew that in the back of my mind that I had like an inkling of where I wanted to take my blog. Um, I really liked talking about beauty more so. So I knew that I really liked making recipes and um, beauty recipes and toners and all that stuff. So I knew that I kind of wanted to kind of take it down the beauty route and create kind of like a lifestyle brand. Um, so when I moved back from Rotterdam in March, um, I started to kind of formulate different recipes um, and just started to kind of give like little lip balms here and there to my family, some soaps. And I found that I really liked making beauty products, but I didn't like the process that went with it. So I found a way, a lot, and, and also with giving all these products out, a lot of people are like, oh, how do you make it? How do you make it? How do you make it? So that sparked the idea to make the My Self Care Kit by Relevant Waffle, which is basically a subscription business where you have all the ingredients pre-measured and it's sent to your door and you can make your own beauty products at home so that DIYing is accessible, it's still creative, but you just don't have the effort of having to find the recipes, find the um, ingredients, source them, and then trial and error. And, you know, you never know if you will actually get a product at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Great. So just to go back a bit, what led you to go to Rotterdam? And you said you was working for an architectural firm. What, what happened to that kind of arm of your career? Um, so after I graduated, I was doing a six month um, internship kind of placement in Rotterdam. Um, and I came back um, after kind of working there. And what I was experiencing while I was there was that I really enjoyed university like creating and having my own project running and executing that project and obviously delivering it to kind of pres you know presentation standard and kind of being in practice because i was you know really interning and assisting i didn't have that same creative you know input that i did when i was in university so it was really important for me to make relevant waffle you know something that i could control creatively that i could still utilize my skills because i design everything the logos the packaging the boxes everything that goes in the in the brand um and that's still using obviously my design skills from my degree um so was yeah it an, was it an architecture yeah architecture, architecture degree that? yeah yeah so i did three years and part one architect mm -hmm. um and then did six months in rotterdam but throughout my degree i was working in an architecture practice as well mm -hmm. and rotterdam is not the uk it was that a big decision for you to go out there because it's hard re it's hard relocating within the country that you're from it yeah was a big challenge to go and relocate to another country it was um i think i'd kind of i'd been i studied in birmingham and i kind of was i've been there for about three years i live in wolverhampton so that's even closer to birmingham mm -hmm. so i knew myself that i wanted to kind of explore i wasn't really convinced by the london hype of working um, so I just kind of thought, you know what, let me just move. Um, and I ended up moving on with my partner. We both moved there because we both did the same degree. So it was even, it wasn't so much of a challenge because we were moving together and I wasn't going alone. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was still a really good experience, like traveling and it really, in fact, being in there, having all these new experiences made me want to write about so much because it was so new to me. Mm -hmm. And you made the decision to, to start Relevant One for what what was the scariest thing about making that decision or did you just say this is what I'm going to do I'm doing it and and that's just that 
Uh, yeah, I guess I, I think it's really kind of plucking the idea that you want to run with because with me, I'm a bit of a serial idea, idea person. Like I have a few, Oh, what if I did this? What if I did this? Um, so I kind of thought, okay, right. So where do I want to take this? I tried a few different things like making products and then seeing whether they would actually sell. And, and I, the only one that I felt really, really passionate about was the kits. Um, because I felt like I was sharing knowledge of like things that I make with other people that want to make the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's still, um, you know, you always, I think sometimes you just have that like, oh, should I should have done this idea, what if I did the other idea? But I think it was really just starting something and just learning like on the go um, and just learning to manage, you know, the more experience you have in running, I guess, the business, the more you can kind of, okay, this worked, this didn't work. You can trial different ideas and move that forward. So initially I did, I was a bit hesitant and I think kind of going to um, like networking events and, you know, gaining more confidence really helped me. So did you make the decision to go full-time with the business or did you work part-time alongside uh, launching the business? Um, so I, when I moved back from Rotterdam, I was eight months, seven and a half months pregnant. So I knew that I needed something creatively to do when I came back. Um, so, and I wasn't going to work because obviously I only had like a month and a half left of, um, pregnancy. So I did it full time and it was like my priority to make it work so that I wouldn't have to go back to work because I knew that childcare and the cost of everything like that would just mean that you know, me going to work and then working and just spending all the money on childcare just wasn't going to work. So, yeah, I made the decision to just move back and just start building um, and try and doing what I could beforehand and then also kind of continuing that on afterwards as well. So did you have a boy or a girl? A boy. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank How you. old is your son? He's now eight months. So you, that's uh, an amazing story. <laughs> you started a business about to give birth and I guess you've been growing the business with a tiny baby how have you found that juggling um it is challenging um at the moment I've found it I feel like I've gotten into my like stride of managing my time like because it's so important for me to manage my time so that I know exactly what I need to do each day I need to wake up early I need to because he I really I really manage my schedule around the times that he's awake and the way times when he's not mm -hmm. um so I think since it really took me a while to get into the swing of things, but now um, I've found a way to just kind of get stuff done and then have the rest of the day just to kind of really focus and like, you know, spend time with him. Mm -hmm. And in terms of your kind of energy levels, your, um, I guess, sleeping patterns, what's been the impact there? So, yeah, the sleeping patterns are, it's, we're still working on that, so... <laughs> Um, at the moment, he sleeps around half seven, um, eight, and then I go to bed at nine, and then I wake up at four, and do usually try and work from four till eight, and then by the time he's up, I've kind of done like the majority of the work, and really the only few things I've got doing got to do in the daytime when he's up is just kind of if we go to the post office, we'll go to the post office together, mm -hmm. and but I'm prioritised getting my work done between four and eight so that my day is free. That's amazing. I cannot wake up that early. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I would ever, ever, if you asked me this about a year ago, I would have said no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, um, my daughter is two and a half now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started the business where she was one and a half. Mm -hmm. And trying to, you're at the nice stage where you can put the child in one area and they usually stay around the area. Yeah. I the business when she started walking, running, talking. Mm -hmm. And now she's in a, now she's at a stage where she comes and she, if I'm on the computer for too long, she'll turn it off. Oh, wow. Yeah. So <laughs> she's, <the boss. laughs> she's she is actually the boss. <laughs> In terms of the, the development of the business then over the last, I guess it's nearly a year, what, 10 months? Mm -hmm. What have been some of the kind of highest points for you and greatest successes and what, I guess, in contrast, have been some of the hardest points? Yeah. Um, I think probably the highest points is just constantly seeing the feedback um, from customers telling me that they really like the product, they really like the concept. Um, 
that really just gives me kind of like a daily affirmation that, okay, this is something that is just not an idea and it's just not just for me. You know, people do actually enjoy what I'm producing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess the lows is, I think when you kind of have really a strict time constraint, you kind of like, oh, we should just could do more, but there's only so much I can do without, you know, burning myself out and, you know, running myself into the ground. I have to be humble with how much time I can spend on this mm -hmm. um, and prioritize the main tasks. And yeah, I think really those are the highs and the lows, I guess. I mean, I could spend more time, but I also know that it's important for me to have a balance because, you know, if it's just, if I'm completely consumed by it, it's not, it's not healthy and it's not long term. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the development of the business, where do you foresee it growing to? What's the overall kind of big picture goal? Um, for me, I have two goals. One is to grow a really loyal subscriber base, um, continue to get pressed, continue to grow the business um, and just have more less kind of because right now you can get like one-off kits and you can subscribe but i really want to have a loyal club of like subscribers who are diy fanatics basically um and additionally to that like my second goal is to have a kit that you can um just a comprised kit basically like one because in one in a box now you can get two mixed yourself projects and um a self-care tree but i want to comprise the kit into one mixed yourself project um, and put them into stores because I haven't seen one of those yet just like in stores in Boots in Holland and Barrett where you can just buy it and you can make it's just a 15 minute recipe and you can make your own product at home mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the goals basically and that's really I think that will come from having that loyal subscription base and just growing continue to grow the business growing sales so that is one of the main goals for me mm -hmm. Did you always know that you wanted to run your own business or was it simply due to the circumstances around you coming back from Rotterdam? I think, uh, yeah, I always wanted to. Like when I think about back to like the amount of ideas I've had, like, oh, I always thought, oh, because I, I went through a really like big fitness stage and I was like, oh, I should sell these diffuser water bottles or I should do um, hairdress. Like I just had so many phases. And there was nothing really around me to like force me to make any of these ideas come about because I went to uni, I was kind of working at the same time. So I didn't really feel the need to add an extra income when I'm studying basically mm -hmm. and having to dedicate more time to something else. Um, so knowing that when I was coming back, I was going to have, well, not free time, but my days were going to be a little bit different. I'd have, you know, creativity. I wouldn't be doing as much as I would be if I was at work. I knew that. I needed that kind of project because I'm just so used to having something ongoing um, and I've never really had a period in my life where I'm just not, you know, really doing anything, like whether that's education, whether that's at work. So having that whole, um, my circumstances change, I knew that, okay, this is a great opportunity for me to just step outside of my comfort zone and pursue something that is interesting to me, that I'm passionate about, that I can, you know, I can really push to its limits. Um, so yeah, I think I, I've always had that streak to be like, oh, you know what, I'd love to work for myself one day. But now it's kind of like, okay, Tish, this is probably the best way to do this right now. You know, try it, try it out. Work as hard, not hard. Work as smart as you can. Um, mm -hmm. Put in as much time as you can, and just see how it grows. If it's conducive, keep going. If not, you know, there's other options. And were the people around you supportive of you going in that direction, or did you have people say, why don't you just take the time off? and stay with the baby um yeah i kind of had like two sides of the coin i mean there was a lot of support uh, which was great um and then at the same time it's kind of like well you know you can just rest like you don't have to just do something you know you can just rest and i'm just like yeah that's just not how i work mm -hmm. and the other side of that was um oh you know what about architecture what about architecture and i think that is still to me i'm just a creative person like in uni, in school, I'd always have flares of like, oh, I want to do textiles, I want to do art, I want to do design. There was nothing I really was stuck to. Um, I just loved anything that was creative. So architecture was a degree that I chose because I knew that it was comprising science, maths, you know, art, um, technical skills. So I just knew it was perfect, a perfect fit for me. Um, and then kind of having my business, my own business, it's the same kind of skills. You're touching on everything, you're wearing different hats. So it just suits me. Um, so yeah, so 
I, I had kind of, you know, a lot of support, but then I also had kind of like, you know, what about this, what about this? But really it was just kind of sticking with, you know, what I felt was right and kind of pushing that through. And how did you do that? How did you drown out those, those voices saying that you shouldn't do it? I really was just kind of like, hang on, this is m my only time to just have an excuse to not go to work. Because if I just said I'm, I'm not going to work, then I'd have a lot of voices like, well, you know, you got to do this, this and this. So I was like, you know what, I'm at home. Um, I may as well just stay and try and, you know, build a business, see if it will work. You know, put my, you know, passions into something that I'm happy and proud to create and sell. Um, and, you know, I think it's just one of those things where you're obviously going to have um, people or, you know, friends, family just question what you're doing, your choices. But really and truly, as long as you're happy and you can wake up every morning, because I'm the one who chooses to wake up at four in the morning. No one can tell me to do that. So as long as I'm happy and I've got the energy to run this, then you know, the results will come as I continue to progress the business. And then that's when people are like, oh, you know, that wasn't a bad idea, was it? So, yeah, I think, I think you will always have, you know, conflicting advice. And going back to kind of more business related questions. When people start a business or they're thinking of starting a business, one of the kind of scariest challenges is often, how do I get my first client? or my first customer what was how did you manage that process and how did you get your first customer um well i think the main thing for me was kind of going to events because i realized that i can't keep selling to my family and friends like this they can only support me so much <laughs> mm -hmm. so i knew that i had to go out there to find these people and find people with the same interests as me um, so I started with, you know, finding events that were similar to where people with, you know, interest in natural beauty would be there. Um, and, you know, it was kind of like, oh, okay, she, she actually wants to buy this. This is good. And this is not a friend. I don't know her. So I think you just almost have to go out there, you know, just present your product, just say, this is what I do. This is how it is. This is how it works. This is what the cost is. And, um, you know, grow your your um customers outside of your family and friends yeah that's when you really know where the you the product that you have is viable because you've got actual support from people who don't know you have no ties to you and can give you honest advice mm -hmm. is there anyone kind of out there in the world of women in business that really inspires you and why um yes there's a lot of people that inspire me i actually do a lot of interviews on my blog with um female entrepreneurs so i constantly talk to people and women in business and i think it's important to like be in that space with people who are running their own business and you can understand their struggles and their highs and lows um, and relate to them and from a woman's perspective as well Mm -hmm. um, one of the major like, role models for me or people that you know inspire me is Sharma Dean Reed mm -hmm. and she's the founder of War Nails and I don't know why I just I think she's just got so much drive so much passion and she had an idea and she's just been running with it since and it's just been continuing to grow mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the things that you can almost get disheartened with in business that it's not booming straight away. Like you're not having, you know, not having cues, you're not having instant demand, but it's really just believing in that one idea and okay, you know, constantly pushing it forward, evolving it, developing it, um, collaborating, finding ways to just push it even more. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing her do that from her, like her nail salon in, um, in London and, you know, just see how much it's grown and now she's started the next business. It's just really inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. How do you keep pushing when you really want to give up? And you must have those days where, I don't know, if the baby hasn't slept in the night, you're tired, mm -hmm. and you just don't want to get up at 4 a.m. Um, I think I just remember that I have goals I've, I've set for myself. I know what kind of life and what I want to achieve. And me allowing, you know, kind of negative thoughts or went down days to really take a toll on, you know, on me um, is going, not going, it's basically going to hinder that process. Mm -hmm. But I also allow myself, if I'm having a down day and it's not, it's not looking productive, I don't beat myself up about it because not every day I can go in at 50 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, yeah, it's a balance. I allow myself to be, okay, you know what, oh, I'm annoyed at this, isn't this? 
but I don't let it take over me. You know, it's just, it's, you have to just snap straight out of it and just keep it moving. And especially because with this type of business, subscriptions, you have subscribers. So I can't just be like, oh, I'm not doing it this month. I, I, have, I have people that are, you know, committed to my product. So I think that's also a reminder that and, and every time I get a new sale, I'm like, oh, great. Someone's still buying. That's amazing. So, you know, it's always, it's still a small business. Like it's still growing. There's still so much that I want to do. There's still so many goals that I have, that I have yet to achieve. Um, so I know that I'm only really stretching the surface and the more I continue to work and chip away at it, the better it will be. Mm -hmm. Three pieces of advice for a woman who is pregnant or has a small baby that wants to start a business but is scared to do so. Honestly, I just think you just have to find a passion, be willing to work hard for it and then work smart for it as well. Mm -hmm. And also just don't let the fear of, oh, I've got a baby now, I can't do anything, let you get in the way of it. Because that was a lot of the kind of feedback or the, you know, opinions that I would get like, oh, you know, it's going to be hard now because you've got to be, oh, you, your life's going to slow. And I'm like, no, that's your mindset. If you have it in your in yourself that you want to run a business, you want to do it, you want to continue doing this, you can do it. You have to just have that mindset to say, no, this is the way I'm going to run things. And you'll, you will be able to, you know, find the support to make that happen or find um, a timeline or your, your days to run and make that happen. Just like I have to go to early to get things done. But, you know, when I've, when I've achieved that, I feel like, okay, good. I've, I've got the rest of the day to, to be a mum and do the rest of the stuff. So it's really just you don't, I don't feel like you have to be defined by being a mother. You can still continue to reach and strive for goals. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Great. Thank you so much. And if you haven't already done so, please make sure you subscribe to the channel to watch more videos like this. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like. And if there's anything that Letitia said that resonates with you, please leave a comment underneath the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you.